Hello there. In this video, we will be learning about Kepler's second law of planetary motion. So, the statement of Kepler's second law is the line joining the planet and the sun sweeps equal area in equal interval of time. But in order to understand this statement, we need to understand how the planet is revolving around the sun. So, you might be familiar with Kepler's first law of planetary motion that says that the planet is revolving around the sun in an elliptical orbit in such a way that the sun is located at one of the foci of the ellipse. Now, imagine that the planet is revolving at a constant speed. So, let's say uh, the planet goes from this position, uh, let's say position number 1 to position number 2 and let's say the planet goes from here to here in about 3 months. So, in 3 months, the planet is going from position number 1 to position number 2 and the planet is travelling this much distance. Now, if the speed of the planet was supposed to be the same, then in the same interval of time, the planet would even travel this much distance, the same distance. So, we can say that from position number 3 to position number 4, also the planet would be travelling the same distance since the speed of the planet is same. Now, let's try to apply Kepler's second law of motion here. The line joining the planet and the sun. So, this is the line joining the planet and the sun sweeps equal area in equal interval of time. Now, if you see, this is the area sweeped by the planet. Now, now the same logic if we apply here. So, this is the line joining the planet and the sun or the star. And this is the area sweeped by it. Now, it doesn't seem right, right? Because this seems much more larger as compared to this area. This seems much smaller area. So, is the Kepler second law not correct? In this situation, I had assumed that the planet is moving at the same speed throughout the orbit. So, in this part also the planet is moving with the same speed and in this part also the planet is moving at the same speed. But is it right? Let's try to find it out. Now, let me assume the planet is at this particular position. The planet after some time it is at this particular position. After some time the planet is at this particular position or at this particular position. Now, let's try to find it out. So, let's say the planet is revolving in this manner, right? This is how the planet is revolving. So, first of all, we can find the instantaneous velocity. So, I can say that the instantaneous velocity of the planet would be like this. At this particular position, it would be like this. At this particular position, it would be like this. And at this particular position, it would be like this. Now, the planet is obviously not going in the same direction. It is bending towards the star. The same happens at this position also, the planet is bending towards the star. The same happens at this point and the same happens at this point. So, the question arises why the planet is bending towards the star? The answer lies in the fact that there is a force of attraction between these two and that is nothing but the force of gravity. So, I can say this is Fg, that is the force of gravity. Hmm. Also, we know that the force of gravity is given by G mm divided by r square. Now, this force of gravity is inversely proportional to r, that is the distance between two masses. At this particular point, the planet is very far away from the star, so the force of gravity should be less as compared to at this particular position. So, I can rewrite this and I can just say, at this particular position, the force of gravity would be stronger and at this particular position, the force of gravity, I, I can say Fg dash, would be smaller. Now, when the planet is at this particular position, the force of gravity would be something like this. And at this particular position, the force of gravity would be something like this. Now, we know that if an object moves in a uniform circular motion, then the velocity vector of that object is perpendicular to the force vector. Now, force and velocity are perpendicular to each other. But in this case, if you are able to see here, the velocity vector is pointing in this direction but the force vector is pointing in this direction. They are not at all perpendicular to each other. Now, similarly in this particular case, the velocity vector is pointing in this direction versus the force is pointing in the other way around. So, in a way, we can say that the object or the planet will slow down at this particular point and it will keep on slowing down till here. Now, after this particular point, what happens is, now the force vector is aligned in this direction and the velocity is in this direction and you can see the object or the planet will speed up the planet will speed up and it will speed up till this particular point. The planet is pretty fast. The speed of the planet is very high and at this extreme position, the planet is traveling slow. So now that we know that the planet is not going with the same speed and we know that at this extreme position, 
the planet is much slower so in a way i can rectify this and i can say that the planet might not be going this extreme distance might only be stopping at this particular distance right so the planet would be traveling a lesser distance here so if i make this graph once again so this is the area sweep by the planet at this particular point and now it seems all right now it seems fair that yes it could be a possibility that the planet is sweeping equal areas in equal interval of time but still it doesn't answer mathematically for sure it gives us an intuitive idea that how the planet would be able to sweep the equal areas but how we can prove this mathematically so now let's prove the same equation mathematically as well to give a more clear idea of what's happening here let me assume that the planet is at a position p1 and after some time let's say after the sign delta t the planet is at a position p2 in such a way that the planet the position vector of this planet when it is at a position p1 is r1 let's say it is r1 vector and the position vector of this planet when it is at p2 with respect to sun is r2 vector and the planet is taking delta t time to go from this position to this position and let's say the instantaneous velocity of this planet at this particular point is v also we know that at this particular point the planet is being attracted towards the sun by a force of fg that is the force of gravity now we know the force of gravity that is acting in the inwards direction and we know the position vector that is acting in outwards direction so this is how the situation is in such a way that the angle between both these vectors is 180 degree so if i find out the torque so torque is nothing but position vector times the force vector now this is the position vector so in this particular case i can say that the position vector is r1 vector times the force vector is fg vector and since the angle between them is 180 degree so i can just say that torque is equal to r1 vector cross fg vector so i can say the value of torque is equal to r1 times fg multiply by sine of 180 degree and we know that sine 180 degree is zero so i can say that torque would be zero once we know that the torque is zero I can relate the torque with angular momentum in such a way I can say that the torque is equal to rate of change of angular momentum. So now if the torque is zero, so dl by dt also would be zero. So I can say that angular momentum of the planet would be constant. Now, now this thing would be used by us to prove that the area sweep by the line joining the planet and the star is same. So now that we have understood that the angular momentum for a planet is constant, let's use this information to find the aerial velocity now aerial velocity is nothing but the area divided by time so how much area does this planet sweep in how much time so let's say in delta t time that the the area sweep by the planet i'm just marking it with these lines so this is the area right you might also be familiar with let's say if we have two vectors a vector and b vector and we are interested to find the area of parallelogram formed by this uh, these two uh, vectors so it would be a vector cross b vector now this doesn't seem like a parallelogram it seems half of the parallelogram considering this to be the entire parallelogram so it would be the half of that so i can just divide this area by two so the area of triangle so formed would be a vector cross b vector divided by two so i can say that delta a vector is equal to this a vector so this a vector in our situation is r1 vector cross this b vector so the b vector in our situation would be something like this p1 p2 vector something like this so i can say p1 p2 vector now this p1 p2 vector is nothing but a displacement vector so i can say that velocity is equal to p1 p2 vector that is the displacement p1 p2 vector divided by delta t so from here i can say that p1 p2 vector can be simply written as the velocity vector times delta t and that is in the cross product with the r1 vector r1 vector now we also know that the momentum the momentum vector is equal to mass into velocity vector so i can uh, just write this as velocity vector so this velocity vector could also be written as momentum vector divided by mass so i can simply write this as momentum vector divided by mass times delta t delta t and here there would be r1 vector there would be r1 vector and there would be a cross product and if you are interested to find the delta a so it would be half of this right 
as you are able to see there is a half element to this so it would be half of this entire thing now i can rearrange this entire equation and i can say delta a vector divided by delta t that would be equal to half uh, and i can take mass outside so it would become 1 by 2m uh, times this can be written as r1 vector cross this would be linear momentum vector now r1 vector cross p vector can also be written as the angular momentum vector that is the l vector and this entire thing can be written as delta a divided by delta t that would be equal to 1 divided by 2m into l now we already had found out that for a planet the angular momentum is constant so i can say if the angular momentum is constant then this entire thing and mass obviously is constant so this delta a by delta t will also be constant and this delta a by delta t is nothing but the aerial velocity aerial velocity so in a way we can say that the aerial velocity of a planet is also constant and this is what kepler's second law talks about so kepler's second law simply talks about the line joining the planet and the sun sweeps equal area in the equal intervals of time so in a way we can say that the aerial velocity of the planet is constant so this could also be called as a kepler's second law this seems like a little bit more complicated that's why this definition is rather more easier one that the line joining the planet and the sun sweeps equal area in equal interval of time i hope you understood kepler's second law now see you in the next video till then bye bye